Hello my friends, Stark here, Stark date 2021.06.09. I've made a difficult decision to junk my 2006 Ford Escape. 2.3 litre four cylinder engine, five speed manual transmission and automatic four-wheel drive. That's right, a little bit of an unusual combination. Five-speed manual transmission, but has the automatically engaging rear axle for four-wheel drive. This is not an all-wheel drive car. When it doesn't detect slippage, the main drive is on the front axle which is why two-wheel drive Ford Escapes drive from the front. One of the two catalytic converters was right behind the engine block because it was immediately downwind of the four header pipes that exit the cylinder head. Now that I have removed the exhaust system in entirety, we'll start the vehicle and the exhaust will directly exit the cylinder head. So it will be super loud. Let's check it out. Yeah, that's enough of that. I don't want to be deafened. Friends, permit me to show you why I junked this Ford Escape. Unlike most SUVs, the Ford Escape is unibody, so it's not body on frame, but this lower section is broadly equivalent to the frame on a body on frame vehicle and then above the line here is the body section but they're welded together so unibody construction the suspension tower is breaking away from the body The side of the frame is rusted out on the far side of the shock absorber. And it's cracked from that rust hole through the frame section and into the body section. So the rust caused the crack because the metal integrity is weakened. This is the sound insulation on the inside of the vehicle. So in summary, it's dangerous. Wouldn't want to be hit in the rear. Yeah. Would you drive this? No, probably not. We're gathered here today to say goodbye to the reliable yet rusty 2006 Ford Escape. As mentioned, she's somewhat unusual insofar as she has the five-speed manual transmission and the automatic four-wheel drive. She's not an all-wheel drive. They didn't make an all-wheel drive in this generation. 
So, when the computer system detects slippage on the front tires, which is the main drive on a Ford Escape, then it activates the rear axle. I bought this car almost three years ago and we have driven her tens of thousands of miles. So from here in Indiana, this escape has been to Ohio, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Illinois, Kentucky, Wisconsin, Minnesota, South Dakota, and my cousin even drove her to Arizona. I can't say which route he took, so I can't fill in the states between Indiana and Arizona. That depends on the route, but he drove the distance. Yeah, unfortunately, her backstory is that for most of her life, she was a Michigan vehicle, and Michigan cars are renowned for rust because of the quantity of salt that Michigan uses upon its winter roads. Farewell, Lacan, adios, au revoir, auf Wiedersehen, whatever language you speak, to the Ford Escape. You were a good car. Now that we're in the period of mourning for the Ford Escape, permit me to tell you about the only time that the vehicle stranded me. I felt as I was driving it that it was running out of fuel, that there was insufficient pressure to deliver fuel to the engine. And when the vehicle finally stopped and wouldn't drive anymore, indeed I couldn't hear the fuel pump running. I towed the vehicle to base and proceeded to check fuse and relay. I'll try to link to another video which I've uploaded where I show how to check fuses and relays with respect to the fuel pump system. I replaced the fuel pump itself after having checked the fuse and relay and still no dice. The fuel pump wouldn't run, a brand new pump. And I confess that that stumped me for some time. I didn't understand what the problem might be if the fuse was good, the relay was good and of course we now had a brand new fuel pump. Eventually, my research identified this component. It is a miniature computer known as the fuel pump driver. And I'll admit that before the Ford Escape broke down and stranded me, I had never heard of a fuel pump driver. Its function is to govern the power or the output of the electric fuel pump. And it accomplishes this by being wired both to the electric fuel pump and to the main computer, the ECU, via the vehicle's wiring harness. So the purpose of this device is to vary the power output or fuel pressure of the electric fuel pump. For example, if the vehicle is coasting and the engine doesn't require much gasoline, then the fuel pump driver will instruct the fuel pump to slack off because little gasoline is required at the engine for coasting. And conversely, if the driver punches the throttle pedal and more power is demanded from the engine, then the fuel pump driver will instruct the fuel pump to speed up and supply more gasoline to the engine. 
So this is rather different to the manner in which an electric fuel pump is traditionally operated, whereby it runs at the same speed no matter the demands upon the engine. So that's my tip for you. If the fuel pump, the relay and the fuse all seem to be good, then consider the fuel pump driver. I should add that I was fortunate in so far as I was able to obtain a replacement fuel pump driver, this one, from a vehicle in my salvage yard because at least with respect to the mid to late 2000s Ford motor vehicles the size and configuration of the engine seemed to be irrelevant and that really surprised me the part number is the same this was removed from a Ford F-250 with a 6.8 liter V10 gasoline engine and matched the little Ford Escape with the 2.3 liter four-cylinder engine. Same part number, completely different engines. Thank you so much for watching my friends. Take care. See you next time. In case you're wondering about my daily driver, now that the Ford Escape is gone, I'm back with Old Faithful, my 1994 Plymouth Grand Voyager minivan. Yep, after months of on and off searching, I was finally able to locate, remove, and purchase a replacement rear right hub. That's right, those hubs are obsolete. They are no longer available to purchase new. Ordinarily, I would have located and purchased a used hub from a salvage yard months ago. But these first and second generation minivans are getting old. They're difficult to find in salvage yards now and it just took a long time to find the right hub. But back on the road now.